It's official, ladies and gentlemen. DCA's Twilight Zone Tower of Terror will be closing down early next year so that its show building can be transformed into Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout! Before you get bum rushed at the Wild Wild West. When I roll into the Wild Wild West. It's pretty. Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout will open in summer 2017 to coincide with the release of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. In fact, I've heard some rumors that they want to hold the premiere of Guardians Volume 2 at DCA in the theater that used to hold Muppet Vision 3D and then have the grand opening of the ride as its after party. Now, if that's true, and if they really are keeping Tower of Terror open through the Christmas season, then when you factor in soft openings, that only gives them about three, maybe three and a half months of turnaround, which is really, really quick for a refurbishment of this magnitude. Help! sometimes it takes me longer to edit a Some Jerk episode. By the way, the season three finale is still coming, hopefully later this month. Within mere minutes of officially announcing this ride at Comic-Con's Marvel panel, Disneyland released a video about it to its YouTube channel, hosted by Imagineer extraordinaire I'm Joe Rohde. And go! <laughs> what the hell is that thing on his ear? It takes you into the world of Guardians of the Galaxy in this really immersive... I can't even hear a word he's saying. I'm horrified and I can't look away. Are, are those his car keys? When he drives, does he have to wedge his entire head right next to the ignition? That, that doesn't seem safe. Anyway, I've already discussed in my previous State of the Parks vlog why I don't think this refurbishment is a bad idea. And in fact, I'm really looking forward to it. But as a result of that video, I've received a fair few comments and tweets and such congratulating me for predicting it correctly. Guys, in the immortal words of a fascistic psychopath, I don't want congrats. Literally everything that I got right in that video, I heard rumors about from other sources. Every prediction I pulled out of my own ass in that video has at best yet to be confirmed, and at worst has been directly contradicted. I mean, I guess I correctly predicted the escape angle, but I didn't even correctly predict who would be escaping. Hell, it's not even technically the collector's mansion. It's just his warehouse or something. The setting is a kind of warehouse fortress power plant where the collector keeps all of the objects that he's brought from all around the universe. Hell, this joke from my Halloween episode almost five years ago was a more accurate prediction. Well, at least at Halloween, we still have that other great spooky ride, the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. And that's coming gonna... this Halloween. The Twilight Zone Tower of Terror gets a special holiday makeover. In anticipation of next year's Arbor Day, the infamous haunted hotel will suddenly transform into a tree. The actual story of the ride will be that we guests are being led on a VIP tour of the Collector's Collection where he's showing off his latest acquisitions, the Guardians of the Galaxy themselves. Yeah, the Collector just straight up kidnaps people now. I can dig it. SHUT UP DOWN THERE! But Rocket Raccoon has escaped and he's enlisting us to help the Guardians break out! Before you get bum rushed. The ride vehicles are now gantry lifts and it's gonna be the same type of ride but now with randomized drop sequences which is really gonna be cool. I mean hell, Florida got randomized drop sequences before the California version even opened so yeah, we're overdue for them. So it's a new-ish e-ticket experience that takes the thrill ride we all know and love and pumps it full of new life and new energy and gives it a whole new story connected to one of the best and most fun and exciting movies of the last five years? I mean, awesome, right? I mean, how could the fans possibly disapprove? His ear wasn't that bad, was it? Oh. Oh, honey. People booed? Yeah. I wasn't in the panel, people but... People boo! Why? Because this is what's going to replace the Tower of Terror. I've never seen a Disneyland video with so many dislikes on YouTube. Lots of uh, negative comments about it. Um... Uh, is there anything positive to say about it? If the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror gets put in Yesterland, most, if not all of your fans, will be upset. Be upset. Be upset. What the heck is going on with Disney and the changes this year? That's what we're gonna be looking at? That is... Ugh. It's an insult. 
to customers, to guests who come to Disneyland and expect greatness. Hashtag save Tower of Terror. Save the tower! Save the tower! There's a lot less California going on in California Adventure. Marvel isn't Disney. Was it bought by Disney? Yes. Was it originally Disney? No. This was originally Disney. And why don't you think how Walt, Walt Disney would be wanted? Will I ride it? Yes. Do I think it's going to ruin the whole park? Yes. I don't want to see Main Street be reskinned to become, uh, you know, I don't know, like uh, some planet from a Marvel movie. Okay, internet. We need to have a talk. You see, back when old Grandpa Jerk was but a wee lad, we used the thumbs down button on YouTube videos as a means of warning. If you were searching for a particular type of video and you came across something that claimed to have the sort of content you were looking for but didn't, you press the thumbs down button. If enough people press that thumbs down button, it would warn future people who stumbled across the misleading video that the video was misleading and not worth their time. But then, something happened. This chair is uncomfortable. Audiences became used to YouTube. They started to forget that there was ever a time when they didn't constantly have millions and millions and literally millions of entertainment options. Suddenly, if you were into, say, review videos, it wasn't enough to merely be enlightened by an opinion. You had to be enlightened by the right opinion. And the function of the dislike button morphed from a warning against false advertising into a sort of nurse call button for whenever your entitlement started flaring up. I started noticing it this year with the new Ghostbusters, and no, I'm not just talking about the trailer. I'm talking about after the movie came out, and I'm not kidding. It seemed like every last review video that dared say anything positive about the film, or even acknowledge that there was good stuff in it, would suddenly get this insane plethora of downvotes just for stating a bloody opinion. Oh hey look, here's a video where Amy Poehler talks about her character Leslie Nope. This video is much more about Parks and Rec than anything else, but uh oh, she's talking to someone running for president, so here comes the bring down brigade. And now we have this Guardians announcement starring Ear Keys here. Literally all it's doing is announcing and describing a new ride and people will not stand for it! Look, obviously everyone's got the right to state their opinion and blah 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 we all know that already but the more you abuse the downvote system the less it's gonna mean anything i never thought i would live long enough to consider a whole bunch of downvotes a good sign for any video but here we are this is where we're heading as a species folks this is the mentality we need to have going forward down is up black is white our entitlement grew so strong that it bent the laws of nature a downvote is not constructive criticism. Pressing one button is not the same thing as expressing yourself. At best, it's the YouTube equivalent of honking your horn in traffic or booing someone on stage. But even more pointless, because if you're in a real audience, you can't just teleport to a different concert. If you're going to reduce your entire negative opinion down to a binary thumbs down, then for God's sake, please have a better reason than it wasn't quite what I wanted to hear. I'm so fragile. And of course, if there's one thing that a lot of Disney Park fans in particular never want to hear, it's that they're outliving their own childhoods. Although, come to think of it, the Tower of Terror has only been in DCA for all of 12 years now, so if you actually did ride it when you were a child, to me, you kind of still are. Now, a big complaint that I've been hearing about the Guardians ride is that it violates the theming of Hollywoodland. They replace the old Hollywood Hotel with some alien crap. And you're right, it doesn't quite fit the theming. Yet. You see, Marvel is the biggest thing in pop culture right now. Disney has owned Marvel for seven years, and in all that time, not one Marvel E ticket has opened at Disneyland. Disneyland is embarrassed by this. They want a Marvel Land, and they want it as soon as possible, and they want it in DCA, so it'll complement and maybe even draw some attention away from the Star Wars Land that's opening in the other park. And the only place in DCA where they have room for a whole new land is Hollywood Land. I mean, now that Muppet Vision's closed, what does Hollywood Land even have besides the Tower of Terror? Well, there's the Monsters, Inc. ride no one cares about, the Disney Junior show only preschoolers care about, it's the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. 
there's the animation building, which I'll grant you is a nice place to sit down, enjoy some AC, and look at some beautiful artwork, but nowadays it's given over increasingly to meet and greets, which pretty much always means we don't know what else to do here. And of course there's the Frozen show, but I'll be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if that ran its course within the next five years. Frankly, if the rest of Marvel Land is going to look as awesome as this concept art, then burn Hollywood land burn as far as I'm concerned. This looks like something from the Tomorrowland 2055 concept that sadly never got built, but hey, better late than never. Disneyland was built to be a place that took you to exotic, futuristic, and fantastic lands that were largely out of reach in the real world. The big failure of DCA was that it only really took you to the state you were already in! Disney's Tower of Terror is a perfect fit for Disney's California Adventure. Mm. If all you want to see is a historic Hollywood hotel, just drive an hour north. The real Hollywood still has a bunch of them. What we don't have is this. At least not till next summer. And that's coming from someone who used to love Hollywood land. I mean, the first time I went to DCA, I must have spent like 90% of my time in that park in Hollywood land. Mostly trying in vain to get in the hot seat for who wants to be a millionaire play it, but that's another story. But perhaps you disagree. Perhaps Hollywood land is still your favorite part of the park and you just can't stand the idea of it losing any of its Hollywood style theming. And if that is indeed the case, where were you when this closed? Huh? Cause I hate to break it to you, but this abomination that we never speak of fit theming perfectly. But then it closed and it was replaced with a ride based on a movie that had no connection to Hollywood whatsoever beyond being based on a movie. Sound familiar? I mean, sure, the Monsters, Inc. ride isn't great. In fact, I just said no one cares about it. But when was the last time you heard anyone say, gee, I really wish Superstar Limo was still here because it fit the theming better. The important thing is that we get a good ride. And to be fair, the Tower of Terror is a really good ride. But it's better in Florida. And that one ain't going nowhere. Ooga, shaka, ooga, ooga. I know not everyone can get to Florida easily, but at least they gave you five months to ride the DCA Tower a few more times and, and say goodbye to it properly and get some freaking closure. I sure as hell wish I could have gotten that with Muppet Vision. So as I see it, this is basically shaping up to be the Simpsons ride all over again. A great ride being replaced by probably an even greater ride, but the hardcore fans won't shut up about losing the original. You know, it occurs to me that a lot of these vloggers are young people who might not have entirely realized yet that re-theming old rides into new ones is just how the Disney parks have always operated. But before Aladdin and the old Soren finally closed, the last time it happened in Anaheim was when the old Star Tours closed way back in 20 freaking 10. That was six years ago. No wonder this is scaring them shitless. Six years is an eternity to the average millennial. Hell, Guardians of the Galaxy was all anyone could talk about two years ago and apparently we've already forgotten how awesome it was. I swear some people just can't see the forest for Groot. And the worst part is this kind of fanboy bitching actually did work once. Oh it's not gonna work here. The die is thoroughly thoroughly cast but um it did work once. Back in 2010, Disney announced that Aladdin, a musical spectacular, would be replaced by Toy Story the Musical, which had previously been performed on the Disney Cruise Line. The fans pissed and moaned and Disney relented. Now, I don't know if there was an actual cause and effect happening there, or if Disney was just trying to make its cost cutting look like altruism, but Regardless, they framed it as, hey, we listen to you! This gave the fans inflated egos and even more entitlement, but hey, at least we got six more years of the genie telling Kim Kardashian jokes before it got replaced by Frozen anyway, so good job. Look, I get it. No one wants to get old. No one wants to see something they love fall by the wayside, never to be loved again. But honestly, don't you ever get tired of riding the same rides over and over again? I know I do. I mean, about 60 to 70 percent of Disneyland guests are locals with annual passes who can go just about any time they want. Yeah, it's always a crapshoot whenever a new ride replaces a beloved old ride, but I would not have it any other way. I'm 
I'm excited about new stuff opening. I want these parks to keep giving me new experiences. I don't want these parks to be museums or wombs. I want them to surprise me at least every once in a while. I mean, for God's sake, why is the petition on change.org if you specifically don't want the ride to change? I don't believe in framing things in terms of what Walt would have wanted because Walt died almost 50 years ago, so who could know? But there is one thing and only one thing that we do know for absolute sure. And that is that Walt wanted Disneyland to be a place that constantly changed. A place that would never be finished. A place that would constantly grow and evolve. You don't have to like every new evolution, but if you can't accept that it must still evolve, and you can't at least give these new evolutions the benefit of the doubt, then what are you doing here? give you this much. At least you're not as annoying as the Ghostbusters haters. The original Ghostbusters actually still exists. Break out before you get bum rushed at the Wild Wild West. When I roll into the Wild Wild West. When I stroll into the Wild Wild West. When I bounce into the Wild Wild West.